the new card from the new bundle is Fortuna. So Fortuna is a four cost three five order legendary that has anchor and shoes, good fortune or bad fortune. Presumably this is a war cry. Doesn't actually say that on here, but I think we can all safely assume that. And you should see just below me a screenshot that I, as mentioned, was pulled from the official Rune Strike Discord of Good Fortune and Bad Fortune. So they're both zero cost spells. Good Fortune, you draw the highest mana cost card in your deck. Bad Fortune, zero cost, your opponent shuffles into their deck the highest mana cost card in their hand. So I actually like this card a lot, to be honest with you. I actually like this card a lot. Um, I think it has a lot of potential. It is, let's start with the base stuff. So Fortuna is a decent body for the cost. It's a 3-5 for 4, which is really nothing to write home about, but it is sufficient. You know, it, I, I can respect it. It's a sizable enough body. It'll dodge a fair amount of removal, so it's, you're not going to play it and it's immediately going to die. At 3-5, you could hypothetically block something and then eat their little stuff. Um, there's a number of different ways that you could leverage just the stats on Fortuna. Now, she's a legendary, so you can't necessarily rely on this particular effect, but the effect is super powerful, in my opinion. Anchor, before we get into the actual good or bad fortune... Anchor is presumably here, just you can't do silly stuff with, like, Circle of Life, the Norns, Dimensional Rift, blah, blah, blah. You're not tutoring out your whole deck or disrupting the hell out of your opponent. Either way, getting the singular effect is pretty good. The better one, I think, right now is Good Fortune. Tutoring stuff out is very strong, and... Even though you technically don't know what you're going to get, you can absolutely build your deck in a way that you are able to know the exact card that you're getting. Now, you may or may not have to have, I guess, your deck list handwritten next to you or something like that. But if you build your deck so that you have a single 10 cost, a single 9 cost, a single 8 cost, etc., you can tell from what you played, what you what ended up in your void, or what's in your hand, what you're going to get at any given point in time. So that that way, when you play Fortuna, it's always going to get you this thing. It effectively gives you extra copies of whatever those cards are. So, for example, I was talking offline to Doctor, and we were, you know, real quick before the stream talking about this card. And one of the suggestions he had was, oh, played in Soldiers, decent body. And on top of it, you can guarantee, guarantee as much as you can, to hit Horus on curve every game. You play this on four, if your curve maxes out with Horus, you're hitting Horus every time. Unless, of course, you already drew Horus, in which case you get the next thing. But you get the idea. You're giving yourself extra opportunities to find the cards. And because of where it comes in the curve, you could slam this down, have something on the board, then, as either a mid-range or control deck, follow it up with, say, a board clear or other removal, and then, oh, by the way, my whatever windmill slam card that I just tutored for via good fortune, slap that on the board, and okay, now we're in business. I actually think that the good fortune side of Fortuna has a lot of potential. I think it's actually pretty solid. Now, the one that I'm much more excited by, even though I think it's worse, is bad fortune. There isn't a whole lot of disruption in this game. There just isn't. And most modern card games kind of move away from counter spells, resource destruction, hand destruction. This one isn't quite discard. Your opponent shuffles the card back in, which generally is as good as discard. It matters sometimes. In Rune Strike, it is less relevant because you have smaller deck sizes. There are often a number of blood abilities or other cards that provide a lot of card draw. It's not unlikely that your opponent goes and finds the thing over again, especially if you play this on turn four. You might be better off waiting till later in the game, you know, the key turn before whatever the thing is that you want to get rid of. Say they have a 10 cost that you know you don't want them to play, set, apocalypse, etc. Play this on nine so that it gives you maximum time for them to have ended up with it in hand, and then you get rid of it. 
if you whiff, at least you get something out of the deal. They're going to shuffle something else back in. The problem with it is, I don't think there are enough disruption elements that are hand-based in RuneStrike today that are going to really elevate this archetype. You could play this with Ramses and run it free. There are a couple of other cards that will actually strip things out of your opponent's hand, either through discard or other means. Honestly, there are probably more cards in this game that fill your opponent's hand, aka the Zcon blood abilities and that sort of thing, more recently in Puza, than there are ones that strip them out of your opponent's hand. That being said, you could still play this in Soldiers, as mentioned earlier when you were tutoring for Horus, but play it the other way. You could play it one turn ahead of their sweeper, hopefully hitting the sweeper, or just eliminating something from their hand while applying pressure because you're advancing your board and hopefully already had a board. Overall, I really do like Fortuna, and I think that it, it could find a home in a variety of decks, especially long term. That'll do it for this particular card breakdown. So as always, everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And Black Lives Matter.